guys, it's Adriana from Let's Make It Academy. I know you love home decor, I know I love home decor, but I especially love making home decor, and that's why we are gonna take it up a notch and make these gorgeous banana leaf placemats. And yes, they're reversible. So let me show you in a little more detail as they lay flat. Let's go, let's make it. Let's make this banana leaf placemat. So the pattern consists of four pages printed out and you're gonna tape it together just like I did here. So it's page one, two, and then underneath three, four. Once you do that, you're gonna cut it out using not your shears for your fabric, but your paper shears. And you're gonna cut out the stem along the bold black line and also the leaf body here my two pattern pieces cut out number one the leaf body and number two the leaf stem I am ready to go for this placemat that I'm going to make with you here through the tutorial I'm going to use this very bright and just interesting vintage floral and it is a bit softer so I chose because this is a softer cotton I chose this canvas that has like a velour nap to it as the bottom so it is bright it's really like in your face but it's going to be the bottom or under the placemat of the banana leaf so let's get this laid out and ready to start cutting if you're using a fabric like mine that has large graphics everywhere you may want to consider where you place your banana leaf because uh, maybe you want like this entire blue flower in there so wherever you're placing the template you will grab that part of the pattern. So just keep that in mind. For the purpose of just creating one, I, I mean, I think it'll look great right here. So I'm gonna make sure mine sort of hangs out right there. And I'm gonna take the bottom of my placemat and place it over here. Placemat, placement, a lot of placing. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do, what I'm doing right here is I have these two fabrics right sides together. So with them right sides together, I'm gonna to place the leaf body right on top and then I'm going to pin in place. You can use your fabric weights if you choose to do that instead or whatever makes it easier for you. I do like to cut once to get my two pieces, but of course you could do it one at a time. Now that I have this all pinned together, what I'm gonna do is cut all around the leaf pattern. If you find that tracing this type of pattern with your scissor is a bit hard, you are free to trace this outline with a pencil, remove the paper pattern, repin it, making sure your fabrics don't move and cutting out your drawn outline. You're free to do however it is that is easier for you. I'm just gonna start cutting with my scissor. Technically my shears. To get the best even cuts, always make sure you bring your scissor down all the way and close. Now that I've finished cutting, what I'm gonna do is remove the pins and place it right under the pattern because I use pins just to keep the pattern in place. So I'm basically just removing the paper but keeping my fabrics pinned. That's all that I'm doing because they are ready to be sewn since they are right sides together. With this pinned and ready to be sewn, I'm gonna cut out the stem the same exact way with my two fabrics right sides together touching, I will pin and cut it out. The first thing we're gonna do is we are going to sew together the stem and leave the top open here. So on your machine, you're gonna sew it around just like you're creating a pouch and you're gonna backstitch on these ends. Then we're gonna turn it right side out. My machine is set at a number two stitch length. And I'm gonna backstitch on the ends.
And I mentioned before, it is a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Before I turn this right side out, wherever I have curves, I'm just gonna give them little snips so that it turns around a much smoother and I won't have curves with jagged points. I have a bit more than a quarter inch seam allowance there, so I'm just gonna trim it. And it's okay if you do as well, you could trim it um, because this is a very natural sort of um, organic, I dare say, project. All right, okay. Now we're gonna turn it right side out. And I did use my chopstick to help me turn this all the way around and make sure all of my edges are pushed out. The seams are all out. So now the next thing is you're gonna take your iron and you're gonna give it a good press. I give it a good shot of steam just to make it nice and neat and i'm going to flip it over and do the same i'm going to be careful on that side because it's velour and now this is ready to place into our banana leaf and now your next step is you're going to take your banana leaf and you're going to insert it into the edge here of the banana so mine of the banana leaf that is so mine is looking wrong side up so when you do this you just have to be careful that you do face it the correct sides with the correct sides matching so obviously this fabric has to touch that fabric and my back fabric touches the back fabric of the mat so you're going to place it in this way so inside it looks like this because then when you open it up it sticks out where you place it is up to you if you place it straight if you place it curved that's all up to you so i'm going to place mine somewhere in the middle and i'm going to give it a little curve just a little turn like that and I'm gonna make it stick out a bit and by making it stick out I ensure that when I sew around I lock it in and it is in place and has not moved so make sure your banana leaf your two pieces cut out of fabric are all matching and what you're gonna do now is with the pencil you're gonna mark on the top of the banana either side an opening meaning you're gonna start sewing from one end and stop at the other. And this is where we're gonna turn the banana leaf right side out. Okay, so once you do your marking, and, and I choose up there instead of down here because it's kind of um, a little bit more challenging to do a uh, sort of turn in on a, on a circle to hide this uh, where we did our opening and turn around. So I do it up here because it's a bit straighter. So now you're going to sew with about a two or two and a half stitch length on your sewing machine with a quarter of an inch seam. So if you are very new to sewing, it is totally fine if you draw yourself a line. Okay, you may need to do that. You may need to draw yourself a line to stay a quarter of an inch away. Okay, and that's what you're going to do. You're going to start at one end, doesn't matter which one, and you're going to sew all the way around. And then when you get to here, you're going to pivot. You're gonna come down, pivot, up, pivot, means turn, and keep going. All right, off to the sewing machine. Let's start sewing. So remember, in between these two marks, that's your opening. And you're gonna backstitch on the ends. the velour and when you work with velours they tend to move I say they walk when you're sewing so that's what I'm making sure that they're uh, all lined up or both lined up so when I get to my points where I pivot I always use my hand wheel to not overshoot my turn and sewing I'll show you how to give these a good snippet when we're done sewing. And you 
keep going all the way around the banana leaf. Getting to the other mark of the opening, I'm gonna just make sure I backstitch. A backstitch here, I did an extra long backstitch, is really important because as we turn this around, we put a lot of pressure on these endpoints. After this is sewn together, the next step is you're gonna trim this stem that's sticking out. And wherever you have your V's or these sort of points here, you're just gonna go in with your scissor and you're gonna be really careful and you're gonna trim, but you're not gonna trim obviously your sewing mark. And you're just gonna give it a quick little snippet in there. If there's too much fabric you feel, you can trim that as well. But whenever trimming, don't get too close to the sewing mark because then with the pressure of turning it around, what you'll do is you'll uh, break or pull apart the fabric. So let me repeat that again. You are going to get inside there into the little V, right there and here. If you don't cut that, it creates a pull when you turn it around, right side out, and you're not gonna like it. And it's actually not gonna look too great. So just go in there and give it a little snip in all your points there. And then if you feel you have too much fabric there, again, you can trim that, but don't get too close to your line of your sewing mark. And then of course, what's even better is to take all your corners there and trim them. This way, when flipping it around and pressing it, there's not a lot of fabric in those areas and it looks much cleaner. Yeah, it looks like my fabrics were in a line because of this velvet. It's kind of hard to, I shouldn't say hard. It's challenging to sew with velours like this. Okay, so after you trim off all these little corners, you're gonna go to your curves. You're gonna go to this curved area and you are gonna give it again, little snippets. Just be really careful not to cut your line. You don't want to cut into that seam. Wherever you had the curve, and this really is the largest curve here. So when you're looking at the banana leaf, it was this end. And now you are ready to turn this guy around. Actually, I left a little corner there. All right, let's turn it around. And my favorite tool to use to help me is my chopstick. So if you work with this type of fabric that I have here, it is a bit, a bit, again, challenging. I don't like to say hard, but it is challenging because it kind of tugs at the other fabric. And it's like, uh, hi, do you want to move already? <laughs> I'm trying to pull you out of there. So um, once you turn it right side out, I'll show you how useful the chopstick is. If you don't have a chopstick on hand, uh, you can even use a the point of your shears, but ones that are really dull, not sharp ones, because of course, you'll pierce your fabric. So first you're gonna use your hands, the best tool you have, to poke out all your leaf edges have all the edges pressed out, I'm going to use my chopstick and go into the corners and just give it a little press just to make sure that they're all pressed out and they're nice and square. Once all of your leaf edges are all poked out and nice and square. What we're gonna do is give this a good press so that it will be in great shape to give it our final top stitch. And that was pretty easy to do. So before we do that, we must turn in this raw edge. Actually, I'm gonna turn it this way. And here's how we turn it in. 
I'm just gonna give it a nice little fold, about a quarter of an inch. If it's more, it is totally fine because this is, like I mentioned before, a bit of an organic looking project. It doesn't have to be perfect. So notice how I turn them both in and I hold them down before even pinning. Okay, I have it down. Now with my iron set at the correct heat setting, I'm giving it a press. Being careful that I have it all down. All right, so I can pin this and I think I have to. Some fabrics really behave where um, no pinning is needed. But this one apparently is not one of those behaving fabrics. So here's what you're gonna do to the rest of it is you're gonna go around making sure that your seam is pushed out as much to the outer edge as possible and you're gonna give it a press. And you're just gonna do that all around the perimeter of this banana leaf. Until it is nice and flat and clean. Banana leaf is all pressed and now we are ready to sew. I actually used fabric clips to keep the opening closed because it was misbehaving. So what we're gonna do is less than a quarter of an inch, unless you want a quarter of an inch, you can. I am going to give this a final top stitch all around the perimeter of the leaf, even the stem right here. I'm gonna go right around it and continue it all the way around. So I'm gonna stay as close to the edge as possible. And this is where you wanna think about the color of your thread. I'm gonna continue using the lime green that I have, but if you had a different color backing, um, let's say you had a brown, I had a brown backing, let's say, I would probably change my thread bob into a brown with possibly the green top. It's completely decorative and up to you. I've gone ahead and changed my stitch length to a three and I'm gonna just stay very close to the edge and sew around. Just as another note, if you want, you can also make this stitch a decorative stitch. So you don't have to make it your regular top stitch. It could be one of your decorative stitches that your machine provides you. No need to back stitch because we're gonna meet that stitch when we make our way around. There's a lot of pivoting here, but it is a really basic and easy sewing. Sometimes it gets a little stuck on the edge. It's fine, just give it a little nudge. There we go, nudge it again. I approach where I began I will give it a very quick back stitch right there just to lock everything in and just like that you have this gorgeous banana leaf placemat and what's great is it can be reversible you can change up the look on your tabletop and use both sides if you choose and also your placemat will come out gorgeous and totally your style and design depending on the top stitching that you use and of course the fabrics. 
And for something a bit more plain like this, you can go ahead and add some embroidering to mimic the lines of a natural banana leaf. You don't need to leave it like this. It, you can just keep adding to it. I kind of left my plain. Well, this one's really bold because that's just the style that I liked. So again, I hope that you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next class.